going on? What is popping, YouTube world? My name is Jamal McKinney, or you can just call me Juice because that is my nickname. I appreciate you guys for watching this video today. Be sure to smash this like button right about now as it does help these videos get to the public and the channel to grow overall. Subscribe to the channel if you're new as well. I do post a ton of great sports videos weekly and almost every single day if I can. And turn on post notifications too so you do not miss a single one of those videos that I post. It's only right, you guys. So the Cleveland Browns just yesterday fired head coach Freddie Kitchens after a disappointing season in which the Cleveland Browns went 6-10 and 10 on the season. And to me, guys, I knew this was going to happen. If it did not happen, I would get on here and I would clown the Cleveland Browns because it just needed to happen. The Cleveland Browns were not a great football team this year. Part of it is due to the players underperforming, but mainly due to coaching. You know, Freddie Kitchens, look, this team... They were not disciplined. They looked unprepared week to week. The play calling was terrible. He consistently did not, the, the team did not consistently find an identity on offense. So the defense was up and down. You know, the players, whether it be Miles Garrett, you know, some of the, some of the other players just undisciplined, you know, not to par. And, you know, I was able to watch the, the Cleveland Browns live in action in Cincinnati versus Cincinnati Bengals in week 17 recently. And, it was just icing, icing on the cake, guys. The Cleveland Browns played awful. They just lost to the Cincinnati Bengals. We're going to be picking number one overall in the draft. And to me, that was the day on the coffin, okay? Freddie Kitchens, he needed to go. And listen, there's no excuse for the Cleveland Browns this year to not win at least eight or nine games. Six wins, it's inexcusable. I mean, it's, no, it's not. It's inexcusable. This team should not be a six-win football team. They have talent all around them. And Freddie Kitchens, he reminds me of a chef that you give really good top-of-the-level ingredients to, and he does not know what to do with the ingredients. You're giving you, you're giving Freddie Kitchens a promising young quarterback in Baker Mayfield, really good weapons in Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr., all-star players on defense in the secondary, the defensive line. Cleveland has Pro Bowl-level players all over the field. And Freddie Kitchens cannot stir up wins. He's the chef that cannot stir up five-star meals with five-star top-level ingredients. He's putting out piss-poor, just bad meals. That's that's the analogy I'm going to use with Freddie Kitchens. There's no excuse. And also, I felt I said recently that Freddie Kitchens was over his head, okay? Because he should have never been hired in the first place. I said in the offseason... That was a decent move, not a terrible move, but a decent move. I was wrong. That was one of the worst hirings of the offseason, in my opinion. Probably the worst hiring of the offseason, honestly, because Freddie Kitchens is now fired. Um, See, Freddie Kitchens went from being a position coach to an offensive coordinator to a head coach within less than a year. That's not the ideal situation to put anyone in. I don't care if you're a young Bill Belichick. I don't care if you're, young Pete, if you're a young Pete Carroll. That's literally never happened. I mean, it's very rare that that happens to a, you know, a head coach or a guy that's coaching football just in general. He should have never gotten the job. He was never qualified for the job. He should have never been hired. The, the Cleveland Browns last year should have went out and got a proven commodity. They didn't do it, and it bit them in the butt. It really did. And, you know, Freddie Kitchens, he reminds me of a substitute teacher that doesn't have control of the classroom. You know, see... Freddie Kitchens last year, he did some good things as the interim head coach. Keyword, interim head coach. Just because you're a good interim head coach and the team is playing well with you as an interim head coach does not mean you're the long-term answer. That does not mean you can man a 53-man locker room for a full 16-game season. Freddie Kitchens is the perfect substitute teacher. But you know why the substitute teacher is a full-time sub at your local school? Because they don't have the control and the command and the makeup to be a long-term teacher. Now, I don't think there are a ton of other great head coaching candidates out there. Okay, you know, I don't think Urban Meyer is a great fit at all in Cleveland. I don't think Lincoln Riley is a great fit in Cleveland at all. And if they were to potentially want the Cleveland job, if I'm the Cleveland Browns front office, I'm not looking to hire a Lincoln Riley or an Urban Meyer. Guys are unproven in the NFL. They're great college coaches, but what Lincoln Riley does and what Urban Meyer does, I don't think that they're the type of, of coaches that can turn around Cleveland, okay? Ron Rivera's already gone. The Washington Redskins hired him. So who's left? You know, Matt Rule, if he wants to come to Cleveland, I think he'd be a great fit. Matt Rule is 
a really good solid head coach at the University of Baylor that turned them around in a three-year period. I think Matt Rule could be a solid candidate for Cleveland. However, I don't think he's interested in the job. There's been reports that he's not too interested in the job. So, I feel like the one obvious choice that can turn around the Cleveland Browns, and if I'm the Cleveland Browns, I'll do everything in my power to get this guy in my building to be the next head coach. And that guy is Mike McCarthy. Okay, I think that I think he would be a slam dunk hire. I believe the Cleveland Browns should hire Mike McCarthy as their next head coach. The reason why is because Cleveland, they need a grown-up in the building that has a presence in the locker room, that can captivate and have the 53-man roster listen to them when they talk and when they're running the show, okay? Mike McCarthy is a, is a former Green Bay Packers head coach. He won a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. His career winning percentage is about 62%, so he wins about 62% of his games. He consistently, when he was going right, winning 10, 11 games straight each season with Aaron Rodgers. I know he had Aaron Rodgers. I know he had Brett Favre, but Mike McCarthy, I'm not saying he's a, an elite head coach, but you cannot do much worse than Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy will be a solid, viable option. He's experienced. He's won in, He's won big time in the NFL. He's won playoff games. And he establishes a culture when he gets to a team, okay? I believe that Mike McCarthy's organized. He's a good decision maker. He knows the X's and O's of football. There's been some reports that he's learning from his you know, past experience in Green Bay, which he was thrown, pretty much pushed out the door by the Green Bay Packers organization, you know, he he's saying he's he said he's going to retool some things. He's going to be more into analytics. So Mike McCarthy is getting with the program in 2019, 2020, and so forth. Okay, and I also believe that you need a head coach to hold Baker Mayfield accountable and to get the best out of Baker Mayfield. You know, people have to people have to realize this. We know Aaron Rodgers is an all-time great. To me, Aaron Rodgers is one of the seven best quarterbacks to ever throw a football. And if you're just talking talent, he's number one, okay? If, if I'm starting a team, he might go number one if, on my list, okay? But Aaron Rodgers came into the NFL with bad mechanics, with bad footwork. You know, not a finished product. That's one of the reasons why he kind of dropped to the Packers in the first place. He sat three years behind Brett Favre. I understand he probably learned from Brett Favre, but you mean to tell me Mike McCarthy did not have a certain influence on Aaron Rodgers' mechanics? on him developing as a quarterback. I think Mike McCarthy had a huge influence early in Aaron Rodgers' career of helping him develop into being a solid starting level quarterback and to be ready to go in week number one in which he took over for Brett Favre after three years of sitting on the bench. He was a well-groomed product when he got out there. I believe that Mike McCarthy, look, if you're going to hire another head coach, I don't. I think that defensive-minded head coach would be solid for Cleveland because I think Cleveland needs discipline. They need toughness. Cleveland, to me, is soft. They're just not, you know, disciplined enough. However, I believe that Baker Mayfield, who struggled mightily this year, Baker Mayfield had a huge sophomore slump. I believe you need a guy that's proven that he can win with quarterbacks. And I believe Mike McCarthy is that guy. I believe he can work with Baker Mayfield. He'll hold Baker Mayfield accountable. And I do believe that Baker Mayfield will listen and take Mike McCarthy's advice and his coaching. Because if Baker Mayfield wants to survive in the NFL, especially in dysfunctional Cleveland, he's going to need to listen to someone. And you've seen the results. Brett Favre won with Mike McCarthy. You've seen the results. Aaron Rodgers, he won with Mike McCarthy. So again, if Baker Mayfield is smart enough, he'll listen to Mike McCarthy. So again, look, and also the offense that Mike McCarthy ran, you know, short, quick game, you know, using the middle of the field, you know, putting Aaron Rodgers in a shotgun to let him work his magic. Same with Brett Favre. I believe the offense that Mike McCarthy ran with Aaron Rodgers mainly throughout the best years of his, of his, of his career, you know, spreading the football around to a lot of great players. I believe that Mike McCarthy can get the best out of, out of Odell Beckham Jr., you know, Kareem Hunt, you know, Jarvis Landry, you know, Odell Beckham Jr. I think that it would, be, it would be a perfect fit for Cleveland. He's a proven commodity. He's stable. He's organized. And he commands the presence of a locker room. He can man a 53-man roster and give the respect and the best out of his players. So, again, if I'm the Cleveland Browns, now that you fire Freddie Kitchens, I would go out and I would do everything I can to go hire Mike McCarthy, the former head coach of the Green Bay Packers, to help try to turn my franchise around. Be sure to comment where you agree with me and disagree with me. Love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video today. Be sure to smash this like button right now if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're new as well. I do post a ton of great sports videos weekly and almost every single day if I can. A fun fact about me is I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world. I want to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. Kind of like Colin Cowherd, Stephen A. Smith, Shan Sharp. You get the point. Okay, I want to do sports, television, and radio for a full living once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. 
Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. So the best thing you guys can do to just help me continue to grow as a young broadcaster is to just share this channel with all your friends because potentially if this channel really, really gets somewhere, I want to start my own network, okay? You know, or potentially if it doesn't, you know, or if I fall a little bit short, I want to go into a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. So the best thing you guys can do to just flat out just help me grow as a broadcaster help me learn you know get other people hit to this channel you know just share this channel with all your friends share this channel on facebook share it on twitter share it on instagram all that good stuff also be sure to follow me on all my social media platforms and once again guys just share this channel with everyone you know get everyone hip and watching these videos get my voice out there and heard share it on facebook share it on twitter share it on instagram all that good stuff it's been your boy jamiah mckinney or you can just call me juice i appreciate all you guys for tuning in today i really do have a god blessed day stay motivated you guys and i'm out